Hi, Ben here, and welcome back to the workshop for another Work in Progress Wednesday. We're busy with lots of different projects on the go. We've got some big axes getting handled up, and I'm also working on a few blades as well. And Lois is busy up in the leather workshop, so she actually wanted me to take you up there and show you what she's been working on. So we'll go upstairs first today. Welcome to my little workshop upstairs. I have decided after a long time to put the belts back in stock. They've been out of stock because I've had a bit of a shoulder problem and I've had to reduce my stitching, but now I'm all fixed and I'm ready to go. So they're back in stock, but I just wanted to talk to you about what you do when you order one, because sometimes people order the wrong size by accident. So we have got this amazing belt here that we use at shows, which has measurements on it telling you how broad of beam you actually are. Now the reason it shows we get people to actually put this belt on is because this is a true measurement. When you buy trousers at the shop they're being a bit kind to you. They've actually got a size smaller than you actually are. So when you put the belt of shame on you get a proper measurement. So when you order one online even though you might have been buying a 36 trouser for 10 years, you might not actually be a 36. So get your tape measure out and measure yourself. Now you can either measure the belt you've been wearing already to the hole that's most used, or you can measure yourself where you have your belt. Now some people wear their belt right on the waist up here, so measure there if you want it there. But if you wear it down lower on your hip, particularly if you're a uh, female, they might be quite a bit wider there, so you want to measure there. Get the right number, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, because you want it to be comfortable and you want it to last a lifetime, so you want something that fits. Then, after you've got over that, might be good news, you don't know, after you've got over that, you then choose what colour leather you want. And we have got four different colour leathers. We've got the very light coyote brown, which is really natural looking one. I really like that one, that's one of, one of my favorites. I like them all really. Um, and then we've got super popular Orford Tan, which is this mid brown one here. That's a lovely sheet that with all that graining in. Then we've got the smoky brown, which is a very dark chestnutty brown. And then your classic black. Um, and they all come with the natural stitching. Um, unless you email me and you want something special, like a different colour, you can even have yellow stitching if you want. You can have green, you can have orange, you can have red. Um, but I don't think I've actually put that on the website yet, so bear with me on that. But you can email us and let us know. Also, you've got a choice of buckles. You've got the, the big swashbuckling one, which I favour because it, it makes me feel uh, important, having this big buckle on my trousers. Uh, ben likes this one, it's narrower, better with jeans and stuff. The single West End, that one is. So this is the thinner one for the single West End, and this is the wider one for the big buckle. And when you get the West single West End, you get two, two little keepers, but because this big buckle's already got a keeper in it, you just get one on the belt. So having not done many belts for a long time, you know, your enthusiasm grows because you haven't done it for a while and uh, it just seems more exciting all of a sudden that yes, I'm doing it, I'm fixed, I'm ready to go. And you also know you're super happy and relaxed in your workshop when you're still in your slippers at three o'clock in the afternoon. So that was Lois in her leatherwork room. And as you can see, I keep her upstairs because that's quite an enthusiastic person about, about belts and leather. So back to the real world, back to the normal zone, the ax zone. So I'm down in the sort of knife making department while Lois is still up there in the leatherwork department. And I've been working on getting a lot of these axes prepped. So this is a smaller version of our Nordic carver. So we've got various ones in various stages. So next door in the grinding room, rough ground, basically ready for their final grinds and their acid stonewash finish. 
These got a really nice convex edge put on them. And we've got a few weight reduction holes in the actual tang of the axe. This is a full tang axe, so incredibly strong. And we're doing a few in black canvas Macarta. And we're doing some in OD green Macarta in this run. And I just thought I'd show you the sort of the, the workings really. So obviously I get them to about this sort of stage. And then I normally wrap the edge. So the edge is protected and I'm protected from the edge as well. And normally at that stage, what I do is I just check that everything goes together nicely. So I use these dummy loveless bolts and I've got my two halves of my handle. And you'll probably see that I end up putting lots of these little epoxy holes in the handle as well, just to help the epoxy key into the actual surface of the Makata. And I like to just check that everything goes together before you get any glue anywhere near it, because guaranteed when you've got epoxy that's curing as you're working suddenly these bolts don't want to go in the holes don't line up and things like that so that's looking really good that's looking like it's fitting all nicely and I'm making sure that my handle finishes behind where I've got any of these edges radiuses radius edges and stuff otherwise you're going to have a really nasty little glue line um, so that one's pretty much ready to glue that one's even had its counter bores put into the handle. So these counter bores are where the actual loveless bolts themselves sit into those recessed holes and give this an incredible mechanical uh, purchase on there as well. And the, the actual epoxy that I use, I've been using various different epoxies over the years, but for probably the last 10 years or more, I've been using this G-Flex, this made by West Systems. This is an epoxy that's made for the marine sort of uh, boat industry, really. So it is really, really good weatherproof stuff. But I've just started to use this, what they call the thickened G-Flex. And I've noticed when you're using epoxy on something big, like one of these axes, you can imagine the amount of glue that you've got oozing about the place. Having the slightly thickened epoxy means that it all stays where it's supposed to be. If you use a very viscous epoxy, by the time that it's cured, you can find that it's actually run out of the joint. And we want to create that lovely waterproof seal between the tang and the handle material. So that one got glued up a couple of days ago. So that's fully cured. I've cut the bolts off and that's ready for handle shaping. These I glued up this morning. So they're probably still a little bit sticky, a bit tacky. So they're all clamped up, ready to go, ready to dry. Normally leave them for about 24 hours, something like that. And then we've also got one that I finished in the last batch, which is actually in natural canvas. And you can see when it's finished, and we've got this lovely shaped handle with almost a bit of a sort of Coke bottle shape to it. So you've got really nice grippy purchase on both the, the end of the handle and also when you choke it up close to the head. Uh, and then we give it this lovely blasted finish for plenty of grip. And then we even put a bit of blue on the tang as well. So you've got lots of protection. So, yeah, that's what I'm working on, working on these little mini Nordic carvers, really funky tools. But after a week of making these, your arms are really aching because it's quite a weight when you're holding it, shaping those handles. So I'll probably need a holiday after making all these. So that's what I've been working on. Well, thanks for joining us today, seeing what we're up to. Um, as you can see, we're both super enthusiastic about our work. Um, not just me, you as well. Yeah, I, I thought Lois was over the top with her leather, but I think I'm just as mad about knives and axes. But uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining us on our little adventures in our little workshop. And hopefully we will see you next time. Cup of tea? Cup of tea. <laughs>